little sister, what's the worst show ever? That gets my goat. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. Oh, this is Rish Outfield. Oh, he's already a sad sack. This is the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine's That Gets My Goat. And today we're here to do a sort of a Valentine's Day wrap-up. A happy and unhappy. Is it an unhappy Valentine's Day, sir? Well, I got serenaded by fake Sean Connery for Valentine's Ooh, Day. Ooh, that's happy. It is always happy unless you know what song he serenaded me with. <laughs> yes. What were your thoughts on that? The song or... Well, you heard that when it was done, right? Or, or I sent you... Did you, you make a video of... I did. I made... I mean, it was a non-video. It was like those videos that you go to YouTube and you search for the song and it just has the album art as the video mm-hmm. and it never changes the whole time. Whoa, that was basically what I did. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying that's not really a video. It's just a way that you can hear a song. Now, people can subscribe to That Gets My Go? There's yeah. There's a feed, right? Yeah. But the fake Sean Connery song was not in the feed. It was in the feed. I put it in the feed for you. Oh, okay. So people have already heard it. They have. I was going to ask you what you uh, whether you were amused by that song, whether you like that song. Uh, you know, I haven't heard that song very much. It's funny because my wife the did other you, day. Wait, but did you know what it was when I sent it to you, or did you go? Well, I, I, I knew know. what it, I knew the chorus. I didn't know. It took me like however long it goes until it gets to the chorus before I had any idea what the song was. But yeah, the other day my wife was like, "Yeah, this is that Miley Cyrus song, that new one." Uh, I, Kind of like it. <laughs> she was really. And did you tell her that it's fake Sean Connery? I no. I, she said this before I saw your or heard your fake Sean Connery version, but um, she was pretty embarrassed to admit that she liked it. And yeah, I've only I've only heard it a few times. Not like that other one that. Shoot, what's the other song that she does? The earlier the best one. Best of both worlds. No, no, the the most recent one right before the Wrecking Ball song. We can't stop. Yeah. It's not like that We Can't Stop song, which somehow was everywhere. Maybe it's because of those video music awards where she did the version of it and uh, with all the dancing teddy bears and all that crap. And well, like, see, I thought wreck- stuck that I number one Ball. finger up her, you know what? <laughs> I thought that Wrecking Ball was a much bigger hit than It, it we could, stop. could have been. Because uh, I've actually heard Wrecking Ball on the radio. I've never heard uh, We Can't Stop. See, I don't listen to the radio stations that would play that very often. And if a radio station you listened to did play that, you would never listen to I it. I would stop listening, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, see, the thing was We Can't Stop got on the news a lot because... Because of the twerking. Because of the twerking, because of just all the Miley stuff, how foobar she is, and the stuff that she did on the Video Music Awards to where it was like, whoa, children shouldn't be watching this kind of crap. But, oh boy, did it work. I mean, the whole... Yeah. That was all calculated uh, audacity. Calculated, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, not objectionable behavior, but something that everybody would go, oh! It was uh, shocking, shock yeah, value. Well, smart people out there know what word I'm thinking oh, of. Okay, hopefully, but hopefully we totally have some of those listening to our show worked because it <laughs> elevated Miley Cyrus yeah. in 2013. She was, you know, she went from whatever level celebrity she was to suddenly she was on the A list, and she was, you know, she had a hit album, and, and people actually watched her video. I, I unless it's. Uh, or the Gautier or whatever. I hadn't watched a music video in so long. Uh, I guess I watched the Gangnam Style video or whatever. <laughs> right. Everybody talked about how amazing. That's where that, that comes from. You don't. You, you didn't know it if you hadn't seen the video. You didn't hear that on the radio. Just like what does the fox say? You didn't hear that on the radio, but you knew it by the YouTube video of it. F them. Anyhow, did we have we ever talked about fake Sean Connery? When we went to New Media Expo, did we talk about? His appearance, or anything? I don't know that we ever did. We mentioned karaoke night, but I don't think we ever really went into uh, detail about Fix Sean Connery's appearance there. There is recordings of it out there that people can watch on YouTube. I think uh, uh, Renee was the one that put it out. Renee it's Chambliss. Uh huh. Oh, see, I never heard that. I tweeted. It. I searched for it. You know, when we first got home, and there was nothing, and so. Oh. But anyway, the the my philosophy of 
what makes a good fake Sean Connery song is the the less like dignified the song is, <laughs> the more I would want fake Sean Connery to sing. Because there are a couple of songs that I have sung as fake Sean Connery that are sweet or that are nice or whatever. And and like um, Adele, it's like never mind. I'll find someone like you. I wish nothing but the best for you too. Don't forget me, I beg. I remember you said. You know, I mean, you can actually hear the emotion in fake Sean Connery's voice, of the regret of his life when he sings that. And uh-huh. I was like, wow, that's impressive, sir. But I, I don't want to do those songs. I want to do the songs <laughs> where you're just like, oh, geez, this song is off. Like, yeah, there's got to be a Katy Perry song out there that's perfect for fake Sean Connery. And I don't know what it is right now, but... It's... The Wrecking Ball song. It, the, the, and the, the other thing about the Wrecking Ball song is now, obviously, Miley doesn't write her own song. Somebody was hired, not by Miley, to write this song for Miley. And it is, I think it's a really solid song. I mean, it does have that, as the, the verses leading up to the chorus, where it's just like the same gosh darn note. And, and Miley cannot sing. <laughs> so it's further hampered by that. But, you know, had somebody who could actually sing. Sang Wrecking Ball, I think, you know, it would have, it was already a hit, so who cares? But it, you know, it, it would have been a better song. And plus, uh, there have probably been a hundred real singers on YouTube yeah. who have covered it. And you're just like, wow, that, I can feel the emotion of that. That's really good. This person has had loss beyond a really terrible haircut and Hannah Montana going off the air. Anyway. I, how did we get on this? Oh, we were just so talking about fake Valentine's Sean Connery Day. coming by to visit you on Valentine's Day, and so the day wasn't as bad as it could have been, except for that I recorded that like a week and a half before Valentine's Day. Um, <laughs> I, I, let me ask you how your Valentine's Day has been traditionally, and then how 2014 Valentine's Day was. Uh, Mine's—it's never been bad. Well, I'm—I guess if I went back far enough, I could find some that you know I was sad or whatever in high school or something. Uh, but for the most part, they've been relatively good. I mean, I got married to my wife the last year that I was in college. And yeah, it was like you were just mentioning right before we started recording that, you know, in Harry Met Sally, they, they talk about that where when you're married, you have a date for all the major holidays. Uh, and yeah, we've been married for almost 16 years or has it been a full six? No, almost 16 years. And so, yeah, I've had a date for all those holidays. We don't usually go over the top. To go over the top, you got to have, like, a lot of spare cash that you can just throw at things. Or you don't care about racking up tons of credit card debt. So, yeah, there's been very few times where we've ever done a whole lot for Valentine's Day. I think my wife would be probably more angry at me for getting her like a diamond necklace or something than she would be happy if I got her one because she would know that that means that all that money we could use for lots of other things is now gone. Hey, that's the nicest thing you've ever said about your wife. (laughs) Uh, Because the opposite, if you had a wife that's like, I don't care how much overtime you have to put in or I don't care what kind of corners you have to cut later, this is my day. Mm -hmm. If you had a wife like that, you would fear valentine's day the way that you fear your eventual death (laughs) but yeah she's never been like that she's the one that like is in charge of the money stuff and so she's more worried about it and would you know be more upset as long as i'm within limits then she wouldn't be upset but if yeah if i went out and spent like 500 dollars or something on she would yeah not be happy with me and um insist that I probably return it or something like that. But uh, yeah, this year was a little different than usual because my wife is out of town the whole week. We had to go out of town for training for her job. And so I was at home taking care of the kids by myself the whole week long. And uh, she came home Thursday night right before Valentine's Day and yeah when Valentine's Day came she was just like eh, I just want to sleep I don't want to do anything how about we just pretend that tomorrow is Valentine's Day and we'll just not do anything today and so yeah on Saturday morning 
you know, when we woke up, she's like, hey, happy Valentine's Day, baby. So uh, that was interesting. We still didn't do all that much, though. It wound up being a, uh, because it wasn't really Valentine's Day, there was other things that people had planned, like my daughter had a birthday party she had to go to and uh, stuff like that. So we went out and went to dinner wound up spending most of the night like shopping for clothes for the kids so it wasn't really a big romantic day or anything but it wasn't terrible so you don't have uh, any dislike for valentine's do you have a a feeling about the holiday one way or another positive or negative i like valentine's day i think it's nice to have i mean i understand you know if you don't have a significant other why you would not like valentine's day it's unfortunate that it's like that, that it's like a pressure kind of on everybody kind of a thing where like maybe it's just all the ads, all the flower companies and all the jewelry companies and the chocolate companies, you know, trying to get you to buy that winds up making people uh, resentful of the holiday or something. But to have a day where if you have a significant other, you're supposed to give them some attention when it comes down to it. After 16 years being married, it's really easy to get into a rut where you don't think about that kind of stuff. You go years without ever doing anything special for this person, which is not likely to help your relationship survive. So if nothing else, it's a way to remind you, hey, maybe you ought to do something special for this person sometimes. It should happen more than just once a year. Or more than, let's say, Valentine's, birthday, Mother's Day, anniversary. (laughs) More than just those days. (laughs) There should be stuff. Although, when it gets... Thank God you don't celebrate Christmas, too. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, we're pagans, so the solstice is actually our holiday. Mm, uh, Cool. But yeah, you know, you put all those days. And Christmas is not really one of those because everybody gets something on those days. It's not just a significant other kind of a thing. But, uh, yeah, you know, you put all those together, you should still go beyond that. I mean, it's four days a year, but there's 12 months a year. So that's like every third month you're doing something special. I think those kind of things are worthwhile. So I think in general it's a good thing. But the expectedness of it kind of takes some of the good thing away from it. You know what I mean? That Women are expecting something. You know, you have to perform And so it can't be as much of a gift, if you know what I mean. If you give somebody a gift that wasn't required, then it means a lot. But when you give them something that's required, then, oh, yeah, thanks. I'll put it on the pile. Uh, Kind of a thing, you know what I mean? It's not as, as special. It's not like you thought of them. You know, you were expected to do something for Valentine's Day. Everyone has to do something. So it's not quite as awesome as it could be. What people ought to do if they have a significant other is, like, come up with, hey, there's also going to be this day, this day, this day, and this day that I'm going to do something. But I'm not going to tell her what they are or him. And, uh, yeah, and then they just do something special for the person on that day. It would be an interesting thing. I don't know. I saw some guy who put a bunch of advice. This guy apparently is he's a blogger, and I saw a link to his blog on Facebook, and he put a bunch of advice on uh, he's divorced twice and now he's single and he was talking about how, you know, his sister was getting married and his family always gives like a bunch of advice to the person who's getting married when it gets to that, that day. And he was kind of sad cause he was just like, what advice can I give her? I've screwed it up twice now and here I am single again. But then he realized he had a lot of advice on, you know, what caused his marriage to fall apart and don't do these things kind of a thing. And I was impressed by some of the stuff that he said. It was a lot of really interesting things that aren't never go to bed angry or whatever. You know, the thing that everybody says always kind of a thing. And so it was a, a whole list of, of things to keep in mind. And it was all on one page. No, 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 no. This is the guy. I, I don't know if a lot of bloggers do this, but this guy does this where he's got them all. On separate pages, you have to keep clicking to go to the next page, to the next page. People didn't used to do this. This is a 2010s invention in order to get more ad revenue is what it is. Yeah, it's pretty sucky. 
I hate it. I'll have to admit. But the advice was solid, so I, I uh, was was impressed all the same by what he had to say, which, you know, that's cool. But yeah, a lot of the stuff that he said were similar kind of things, you know, maybe do something nice aside from when you're assigned to, you know what I mean? And it means more that way when you think of them anyways, when it's not the day you're required to. But yeah, that's kind of my feelings on Valentine's. I don't hate it. I don't love it. But I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I feel bad for people who don't have a significant other and therefore resent the holiday or feel like they're meant to feel bad about it. Cause, well, that's, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> but I know lots of people that get something for their pets. They get something for their kids. I, no, I'm not kidding. We get, get stuff for, for mom, our kids, for but it's little tiny. You know, we got them a bag of like 10 really cheap chocolates or something. Not a big deal, but you know. It's a big deal to whoever makes those chocolates. Yeah, I suppose so. And uh, I saw a bunch of roses on your kitchen table, and it's a big deal to whoever jacked up the price three times in the days leading up to Valentine's Day. Let me tell you a secret. I got those roses for free. I'm a really cheap bastard. <laughs> That's, not, that's a Band-Aid on a bullet wound, sir. <laughs> and, and yeah, I, I remember, I mean, it's been years and years now since I had to buy flowers for a, a, a girl, but to see the way that they just shamelessly, I mean, it wasn't just like a, an extra dollar or two for, for a, a dozen roses. It was like end of the world. There's nobody's going to make more roses ever. Yeah. Markup. It's like four times the price of what they were two weeks before. That's why when you do get a significant other, you need to just make up your own Valentine's Day. Here, we're going to do this as Valentine's Day. I was actually saying that to my wife because we did it the day after. And I was thinking, you know what we ought to do with all the holidays is just celebrate them like two days later. So then you can go the day before and buy everything, which is now day after for everybody else at like half the price. <laughs> all this That's stuff you can get cool. super cheap. And then it's like, hey, happy Valentine's Day on February 16th. Hey, happy Halloween in the middle of November. <laughs> yeah, These November 2nd. These costumes cost nothing. <laughs> all that That's stuff great. you could get so cheap. Have Merry Christmas. The day after Christmas, you could buy all the... I don't know. There's not all that much for Christmas that would work. But decorations and ornaments and, and wrapping paper and all that stuff goes on clearance immediately. After it Christmas. does. Yeah, we actually do a little of that. Like go out on Boxing Day and buy all the stuff that's super cheap and then just save it for the next year. Um, which can work as well. It's kind of the same thing, but different. No, but yeah, I, I like that idea of just coming up with an, not an arbitrary day, but just a, a when inspiration strikes or when, you know, it, just the idea of I saw this and thought of you mm -hmm. seems like just a really cool thing that I would do extremely well, but not on fucking Valentine's Day. <laughs> But yeah, that's what you should do when you oh, get. Oh, oh, by the way, another. I can feel the, the rage; it's bubbling up to the. Oh, it's coming it's about back. it at the bottom of my neck, right under the Adam's apple. Right uh oh, now. he's gonna but vomit it for us soon. Talked about, <laughs> well, I, yeah, I was able to vent a little bit about how shitty Valentine's Day was before we started, and you said, "Well, good, you got that out of your system. You'll you'll be even tempered when we do our episode." It is, it's, it's, it's going away. I can see the steam starting to come out your ears. <laughs> But yeah, I was complaining to you about my research into Valentine's Day and how, yeah, we all, everybody assumes that this is some ancient holiday leading back to when Cupid was a mortal being. And it's not. It is so made up for candy companies and, you know, pendant companies and um, card companies and exchanging of, of uh, you know, again, arbitrary gifts that mean nothing, but it's going to mean something if you don't get it. <laughs> uh, but, you know, this year I had a job on Valentine's Day and last year I didn't. And, and our boss at work, she came up to me, I'm trying to think, it was like Tuesday, and said, Friday's Valentine's Day and every employee has to get a Valentine for every other employee. Here's a list of everybody's name. And I was like, whoa, whoa no, no, I don't. I don't do Valentine's Day. I'm sorry. And she's like, no, everybody's doing it. I'm going to have one of the employees make a valentine's box for everybody with their name on it and 
and she said she would decorate it and she's really excited about this we didn't do this last year but we're going to do it from now on and, and i was like no no listen uh, my parents were killed by a man dressed as cupid wear, wearing a diaper and he shot them with arrows <laughs> <laughs> to think. That, that's too that's too on the nose i was trying to think of something a little more obscure but yeah what else is there and there's i can't think of any like celebrities named valentine or anything like that so, valentino uh, scott valentine from family ties is a little was, too obscure i need something in between there was rudolph valentino okay that would have been good but again i think he's pretty ex- obscure too marshall latham knows who rudolph valentino is i'll bet because that's who his wife imagines is making love to her. <laughs> um, the, so, well, anyway, she that's said that's interesting. That, Mine is Colin Firth. Weirdly, <laughs> that's that's who I imagine too. Oh, nice. And, um, but my boss said, you know, everybody's going to do it, and you're going to do it too. And I, I said, look, I haven't given Valentines in so many years. I, I wouldn't even know how to do it. And she says, just go buy some. And put everybody's name on it, you know, and and, and go to town if you want to give them something special or whatever. Do it. And I, oh, I, I, I was upset about it because it was, again, the arbitrariness. It was not, you know, if you like, cause even like Secret Santa, we've talked about Secret Santa a lot on this show. Mm-hmm. That was never obligatory. You didn't have to do Secret Santa at a right. job because in some, I guess there would be lawsuits or something like that. I don't know. It, it's, cause it's weird. Cause Christmas, you can opt out of Christmas if, if you hate people or you, if you, you know, don't believe in Santa Claus or whatever it might be, but you can't opt out of, Valentine's Day? There's no such thing as love. <laughs> uh, there, it's more likely that there is a Santa Claus. I have seen Santa Claus at the fucking mall. <laughs> but uh, there's no such thing as love. And I have to opt into that? Anyhow, I just sat there and I was like, I don't want to do this, but I, I'm not going to be an a-hole about it. I'm glad to have a job. So that she had given me this list, and I wasn't about to go buy Valentine's. Again, you know, it's just like somebody is profiting off of this Hallmark holiday. I wonder where that name came from. The card maker is profiting off of this. So what I did was I, I looked around and I found something that we had at work that I could steal for free. I, I don't know if it's steal. I could borrow with no intention Use. of returning. And <laughs> I got some scissors and on my shift, I wasn't going to do this out of work. I was going to do this while I was there. And if somebody had said, hey, you know, your papers are piling up or whatever, what?" Yeah, I would have been like, yeah, you're damn right. My papers are piling up. I've got 16 of the names done of the people I have to have these Valentines for. And, I, you know, there's still 12 left. But nobody did. Nobody cared. They were they saw that I was doing Valentines instead of my work. And I, they must have been impressed or just like, well, I'm not going to talk to him. We told him he had to do it. Uh-huh. Yeah, like the only chance he's ever going to get to celebrate Valentine's except for in <laughs> hell. And so I wrote each person's name on this little thing that I had cut. I cut construction paper into what it was. It wasn't construction paper. It was actually professional, you know, it was uh, leaflets and stuff into hearts. And then I would write the person's name on it. And then I would try and write something amusing. Like I wish valentine's day were every day oh wait i'm thinking about pizza day sorry and then i put my name which i know isn't funny but it's a fudge of a lot funnier (laughs) than what anybody else did it turns out and so on friday everybody had an envelope and we put our our i and i delivered all these valentines and when i looked in my envelope what other people did was they bought valentines and they said too rich from jen there was nothing else except for the to and the from. It was two names. It took, let's say, 10, let's be generous and say 10 seconds each for them to do this. Uh-huh. But the difference was that they spent money. So whatever company made those cards is super <laughs> thrilled about it. And I was just like, really? Dang it. And, and, and you know what? A couple of them like stuck a candy, a piece of candy or a lollipop or whatever, you know, a prophylactic onto them. And okay. and so I was like, okay, you know, they did more than just write a name. Candy is nice and prophylactics are useful. And and I, I, I had forgotten, again, I don't know if I had said this. Who was I, responsible for getting the shredded cheese? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, that's a callback to an old story of yours. <laughs> and since you can't re- recall the callback, we'll just move on. 
For Valentine's Day, you had to have shredded cheese. No, it was it was, it was the people going on their camping trip, and one of them had to get like the love supplies, <laughs> including scented oils and shredded cheese. It's just like, what the hell are they doing? Oh my gosh, what story is that? That's uh, that's coming back to me, but I don't know what story. It was it is. Uh, home runs, which I believe oh. was our first incentive, incentive episode. episode. Okay, that's right, though, because there was the two Randy <laughs> sisters. <laughs> We're going to go on this. Uh, they gave here, each other chlamydia. Go uh, go on to Smash Words by the time. Oh, shoot. This is our Valentine's Day episode. It I was going to say, be ready I said, I will publish that on Smash Words before then. But check. See ya. And, and, and buy something else uh, that he has up if yeah. you can't find it. Yeah. I, I don't think I would dare charge people for home runs. Yeah. It's Although, a- wouldn't it be fun to do a collection of scatological <laughs> stories? Yeah, you totally could. You've got enough of them soon, by the way. We're, I'm going to force you to do space shit on the show. No, you are not. Yes. That, and in fact, I love that where story. Where was it? I was doing a Rish Outcast, the one where I did the episode because you found your damn flash drive. And so I'm like, well, I'll do my own episode where I can say kike. And uh, <laughs> you know, it's just a tiny bit late on that one. And so I talked about that and I said, you know, I yeah, I wrote a story called Space Shit once. And, and no one is ever, ever going to read it. Yes, they are. But I love that let story. Us, it's please, kind of, okay, sorry. Let I, I, I destroyed your story. It's I funny because I'm no longer angry. Now I'm <laughs> Shredded cheese. Go. Yeah. It had been so many years since I had given Valentine's. It was, it was elementary school, grade school for you that say grade three instead of third grade or year three, which is who we used to say to the year. <laughs> Wasn't that you and Ian that made that Was story? It Ian? I, I, I miss that. I actually started writing that as a screenplay, and it went where all of my stories go. Circular file. Uh, okay, so but it had been so long that I had forgotten that real Valentines already have like a sappy pun in them, or a, a you know a really stupid mm-hmm. happy Valentine you must have, and it's got a picture of Yoda, right? And it has like C three PO on there, and it says. Oh, my Valentine's. I don't know what the hell. Anything. Something prissy. Go. Oh, Otto, you shouldn't have. <laughs> we are only friends. <laughs> oh, my. Anyway. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, we we got to do that. We got to do the many, many guest stars. Thing. Yeah. Oh, shoot. This was supposed to be like an eight-minute episode so I could have it edited immediately after Valentine's Day. Dang it. But that's okay. I spent like three hours just to get Lazarus in the tank done today. Help. What was I saying? Okay, so I I, I I didn't even have to do that. If I had bought real Valentine's, they already would have had jokes in them. But who cares? I didn't want to spend any money. I didn't want to contribute to the... It, it's like, you know, I didn't want to contribute to the greenhouse gases that are already ruining our planet. Uh-huh. Anyhow, yesterday at work, one of the bosses, not my boss, but one of the managers said, Oh, thank you so much for that Valentine. It was so funny. And I was like, really? And I tried to remember what I had written in there. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. And and, uh, and she's like, all of us sat around in the manager's lounge and, sh- <laughs> and exchanged your Valentines. And we all laughed. You went above and beyond better than anybody else here at work. And I, for a second there, I was just like, oh, crap. <laughs> I somehow elevated that terrible holiday in a way that other people appreciated it as though i support valentine's day (laughs) as though i but again it's that's the thing when we were talking a few minutes ago about what you would do for your significant other if i had a wife and she was amenable to sleeping with me i would go out of my way as like okay i wrote you a sonnet for valentine's day here you are and I'm going, I, and I've been working on my Alan Rickman impersonation to do the Sonic in Mr. <laughs> McLean. And I, and, and I can't do Alan Rickman, but that's one of those things where I always thought someday I'm going to sit down and spend like three hours because that's what it would take to be able to do Alan Rickman. And I, oh my gosh, I try it all the time when I'm driving and it's like Mr. Potter. And I can't, I can't do it. There's something I'd have to. You've seen me do impressions. There's a posture or whatever. You know, like when, when I do C-3PO, you see what my hands do right. and all that. And once I get that, I can just do that and my 
subconscious will know what has to be done to talk like Alan Rickman, but I don't know what it is. Anyway, I've been growing this beard and the Alan Rickman hair, and I was just like, oh, yeah, someday, pretty soon I'm you'll be there. Do. And yeah, I've got a turtleneck. I know he wore a suit, but it seems like something a Euro trash villain in Die Hard would wear. <laughs> Yeah, it would be one of those things where it's like I went up of and beyond and it's like, okay, and then I did a painting of her buck naked on a motor scooter the next year and that, but then suddenly I'd be like, oh no, now she expects me to do something really outlandishly romantic every year. And so my own awesomeness would end up hurting me in the end, which yeah. is fine. Because, it's sometimes you know, never, hard. It's never going to come up, and it's never going to be necessary. <laughs> sometimes hard to top yourself. That's uh, definitely true. Once you've uh, done that, like last year for Valentine's Day, when I was at work, w the, you know, you have like the morning show, like dork kind of dude that goes around and does like the funny live shots where he's just there hey we're here at this whatever and, and he oh, does where like he's the, just like yeah every year they go they jump into the ice right the watery yeah. ice and and they call it and they say it's exuberant and they they say you know oh look at that guy scrotum yes that guy right right there, the there, guy there's a morning show guy that goes out and does the yeah, wackies every morning show in every city in the country has their morning show dork and our morning show dork last year went to a barbershop quartet or maybe it was just like a men's choir or whatever and interviewed them and they mentioned that they did singing valentines and i went and checked it out and it was super cheap like way cheaper than i thought possible because they would have four dudes go and do a barbershop quartet at wherever you tell them to go so, so it wasn't three months salary it wasn't like no yeah i would never have spent that much but since it wasn't that way i'm like oh well i'm gonna do this and i made them show up at my wife's work and sing to her so that she would get extra embarrassed like <laughs> she is not at work very long during the day like most people now she works vampire hours right she works vampire hours so the store was only open for like an hour or two of her shift so they had to be there like first thing in the morning and everything. But I made sure instead of having them come to the house and sing on the front porch or whatever, I made sure they were at her work so that she could get embarrassed. Well, so, and so that the coworkers everybody. could be like, "Wow, that girl's <laughs> husband is really." Have you seen how handsome he is? And you know what I heard? <laughs> I just wanted her to get really embarrassed because I knew that she would get super embarrassed. Like I could just imagine how red her face must have been. Huh. But yeah, I had them show up, and yeah, she, I don't know that she appreciates. <laughs> Being embarrassed in front of everybody. Well, most people do. It's <laughs> fine. But, but she, uh, yeah, that's one of those things. She's like, oh. Like when I got pants on the school bus, greatest moment of my I, yeah. I, I reminded everyone of it in the yearbook. Yeah, hey, year. remember that day? So I don't know. She does. She, she mentioned that saying, yeah, you know, my husband, he has a tendency to do these really grand gestures that are over the top sometimes. But yeah, I mean, like, I did get an email from them this year saying, hey, last year you had a singing Valentine, so it's, it's time to order one again. I saw that and I, I was... sprained my wrist in deleting it that hard. <laughs> I... And I was just like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Because you can't just do the same thing. <laughs> That's yes. like, you know, you do the same thing you did last year. Yay. Listen to all those chocolate and jewelry companies saying that's part of their campaign. You can't just do the same thing. This year, get her earrings. Yeah, it, nobody's going to be like, yay, yeah, need. They came and sang the same two, let me call you sweetheart. And uh, I don't remember what the other song was. But yeah, you know, you can only. It was a Humpty Dance. I yeah, really I think it was. No, no, no. It was the Ice Tea's Cop Killer that they did. <laughs> But, uh. Fuck the police. <laughs> wow. I, I'm not really sure. <laughs> you can't Bitches just do that again, shit. so. <laughs> but, <laughs> Smack my bitch up. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I guess you gotta reserve big things like that for every couple of years or something. I don't know. I'm not sure where I was going with that story. But yeah, I think it's funny, your your story about the Valentines and how you did them all up and put the stuff on there and everybody else. Did. It's funny because you're the person who probably, of all the people that worked there, least appreciates Valentines. And yet somehow 
<laughs> you were the one that did the most for it. Despite yeah. the fact you wanted to do nothing, you out valentined everybody. I did. You, is that is I at irony? I think it might be. And the fact that everybody loved it too. They they so appreciated your sentiment even makes it even better. But the other weird thing is I thought about it and I thought, well, next year I'll do. And I, I caught myself <laughs> saying that. And I was like, you stop it. You wash your brain out with soap. Don't. Uh, next year. You know, and, and yeah, it's me. So I won't have a job next year. It's fine <laughs> to know that. But, uh, but yes, that did go through my head of, you know, there were a couple where I just wrote the exact same thing. And I hope that those two didn't trade Valentine's. <laughs> and yeah, I hate that kind of stuff. But. Anyway. But yeah, that's interesting. But it's you know, kind of like us doing the little musical number or whatever at the beginning of uh, two episodes ago. And then we, you wrote one for the last episode. And then the episode that aired this week doesn't have the musical number. And people are like, oh, come on, you guys. <laughs> I thought about trying to figure out a and way. And I did too. I was just like, okay, what's another Frozen song? Yeah, I was thinking, um, okay, the next song in the movie is Let It Go. How can we make Let It Go into a... A song and dance number, but yeah, at some point you gotta let it go, and that's what we did instead. <laughs> well, Marshall had me sing "Let It Go" as Fake Sean Connery for his show, oh, there and you go. so in a way, I've done that one as well. We'll just have to refer people to that. Go check out "Journey Into" to hear "Let It Go" by Fake Sean Connery. Uh, you know, it's funny your experience. You were talking about how you hadn't given Valentine's in like twenty, twenty-five years because. They don't make you do that. Yeah, yeah you don't a... do that in middle school or high school. It's just an elementary school thing. And when it was in elementary school, you had to give one to everybody, just like you did at work, where, you know, you didn't want somebody to feel left. I guess at some point, because, like, you see, like, those Charlie Brown uh, cartoons, and, like, somehow Charlie Brown has, like, no Valentines. You know, he's, like, the, always the, the, the boy who always loses the ball gets pulled away or whatever and so yeah valentine's comes and he gets like a rock or whatever <laughs> or no that was that was halloween but anyways <laughs> he gets like was it halloween it wasn't a christmas it was halloween oh, yeah they would go to each I house remember, yeah like baby jesus brought him a rock they'd go to each house and and like everybody's like i got gum i got a lollipop i got a rock I do remember that. But yeah, I mean, Charlie Brown was that guy. So maybe back in the 50s, you didn't have to. And there was enough school shootings that they finally decided <laughs> that, okay, we're going to start making everybody give everybody a Valentine or else there's going to be no Valentines at all. And we wouldn't want that because card companies would be mad at us. So they went ahead and made everybody give a Valentine. So that's the way like my kids have to do it, have to give a Valentine to everyone. And it was already that way when, when I was a kid. At my school, you know, you had to give one to everybody. You had to give one to the boys. You had to give one to all the girls, even the icky ones. You know, you had to do that for everybody. And sometimes you would just write your name in it or whatever. And if it was somebody you liked, like I remember, <laughs> I started to tell you this story before we started. But yeah, it reminds me of that. Back in fourth grade... There was like the cool kid in class, and in my Valentine, instead of just putting his name, he, he decided he needed to add something in there, and his special message to me was, you cut big farts. <laughs> That's what he put in my Valentine. I still think it's one of the best stories to tell. That's uh, what he appreciated. And I don't know if it was like this for you, but I, in fourth grade, right about that time was like the time when, you know, first of all, you were sitting on those stupid old desks that were like wooden and hard as a rock so if you farted it would echo off of that hardwood like you freaking fired a rifle and of course you were right at the right age where everybody would just laugh hysterically if you did that in the middle of class you'd be like everybody's quietly doing their math and then all of a sudden you know it was like you were the coolest kid in class if you farted a lot and Somehow, I don't know, it was, it was my gift. I could fart a lot. <laughs> in the more grade. things change, sir. <laughs> and so, yeah. I mean, there was a time where I actually farted so many times that my teacher made me go out of class <laughs> and sit outside <laughs> until I could control myself. That is so you, sir. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's how I earned this Valentine was by doing that in class. Eventually, you know, we all had to grow up and farting and wasn't cool anymore.
that was one of the pieces of advice that the guy gave. He was talking about how when he first started to woo his wife or whatever, you know, he would hold his farts in when she was around so that it didn't stink. And he, he would wait until he was in the bathroom to fart or whatever. And then once he got married, you know, eh, he would fart in front of her and he would, you know, it was okay. And he thought, you know, maybe next time around he'll instead just continue to hold his farts and treat her as though he was still wooing her. So, yeah, that's the advice to make your love last. Don't fart in front of your wife. And another one was don't poop with the door open. Why would anybody do that? <laughs> because at a certain point, you get comfortable enough that you just like, nah. You know, you strip naked and get in the shower right in front of her. You, yeah, but poo you gotta, is not, I mean, that's Maybe you want to continue man. to carry on a conversation and she can't hear you through the door. I don't know what, but yeah, at a certain point, you get comfortable enough that you might consider doing that. And he says, don't. Don't do it. Because you don't want that image of you squatting over the toilet grunting. <laughs> <laughs> That's the image that she sees in her head of you ever. Even if you've been married for a long time. Skip it. <laughs> yeah. Scatological stories are always fun. <laughs> I don't know. If I put out a collection of scatological stories, would, it, would people buy them? You've got so many. If they buy stories of yours at all, then they've bought scatological stories. So. <laughs> There's I no think they would. A non yeah, seriously, is there such a thing? You could start with House of Ideas, move on to the Minnesota Diarrhea Ghost, <laughs> go to Space Shit, and Home Runs, and... That you could name five just now is just awesome. And Brown Prom. A brown Prom. You've never even read that. Yeah, I haven't. You still hide it from me. You talk about wanting a first reader, and you have one sitting across the desk from you that you won't allow to be a first reader for you. But that's all right. All right, I think we've uh, said our piece about Valentine's Day, and we're probably good to move on. What do you think? Yeah, I thought this ended up being a pretty good episode, despite being about the absolute worst day of the year. (laughs) I think we still managed to have fun despite Valentine's Day being the subject. So yeah, that's just good. to spite Valentine's Day. We there you go. Fun. We still had fun. Screw you, Valentine's Day. We don't have to mope. All right. We are going to uh, leave you, but we will be back for Guy Fox Day. Yay! Be well. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives license. Doesn't that make you just feel sick inside? Yeah, we actually do a little of that, like go out on Boxing Day and buy all the stuff that's super cheap and then just save it for the next year. When I was a kid, I was so impressed that there was a Boxing Day and that in Canada it was actually like a holiday. And I was just like, it is the best of all the sports. I can't really imagine, you know, why, you know, I guess the Super Bowl Sundays is a football day. But wow, I, I don't know about baseball or basketball having their own days. And I was disappointed when I found out what it really was. Yeah, that's too bad. In my 30s. It's all about boxes instead. Putting your crap back into the box and taking it back to the store and getting your money back. 